Hey there, welcome back to Pepper Geek. In today's video, I'll show you how to make your own self-watering containers. So at first glance, this may look like a normal container with a big pepper plant growing in it, but in fact, it's a self-watering container, also called a sub-irrigated planter. And basically what this does is keeps the soil hydrated for much longer, making it easier to keep your plants watered while you're away. And the result is massive plants. You can grow more than just peppers like I have planted here. You can basically grow whatever you'd like to grow in a big container. So in this video, I'll explain what a self-watering container is, how it works, and show you exactly how to make your own at home. Before we get into it, if you wanna learn how to grow peppers from seed to harvest and get amazing results, check out our ebook, Growing Perfect Peppers, in the description below. It shows our entire process with lots of nice pictures and detailed information about growing peppers. So if you're interested, check it out in the description below. So it's early August and the plant is now thriving, but let's step back in time to when we started the process of making this container. Okay, so let's create a self-watering container. Let's start with the principles of what makes this system work. First, you need a sealed container. This is just a planter that I got from the garden center. It doesn't have holes in the bottom, and that's really important. The reason is that this will hold some water at the bottom below the plant's root system. Part of the plant's root system will dip down into the water and drink up water as needed throughout the season. Next, we'll need something to suspend the soil and the root system above that body of water, and I'm using this, which is called an upsidaisy. I'll leave a link down in the description below. It's not made for this exact purpose, but it's gonna work perfectly for this application. And it comes with this convenient hole along the side, which we'll be using to add water to the reservoir. But I've also drilled holes around the edges here to increase the aeration for the root system and also to allow more access points for the roots to grow through down into the water. So this will sit like this into the pot, effectively raising up the bottom of the pot and allowing the soil to sit higher above the bottom of the pot. So this is going to sit in here and act as a wick dipping down into the water and sucking that water up into the soil above. This is just a leftover nursery pot. It happens to be a pretty sturdy one, so I thought it would be perfect. And we drilled out a hole in the center of our upsidaisy so that this can just sit naturally in it. So this will be sitting down in the water reservoir below, sucking up water into the soil above and effectively feeding the entire root system with water. So this will sit down in the pot like so and you can see that effectively raises up the level of the bottom of the pot. So all of this will be filled with soil and underneath will be just water. Now, since this is a closed unit right now, if I were to fill this with water, it would fill all the way up to the top. We wanna to make sure that water doesn't go above this platform here. We don't want the root system to just be waterlogged and full of water. The plants won't grow in that case. So we drill a hole on the side here which will allow water to overflow once it reaches the bottom of that hole. And so the water level will never reach the bottom of the soil. The last step is to add a water refill tube and we're gonna use that convenient side hole on the upsidaisy to put some PVC pipe. This is just three quarter inch PVC, which happens to fit perfectly in the holes on these upsidaisies. And I've drilled a few holes around the bottom of this just to make sure the water can flow out of it when we add it. And I'll just slide that in right to the bottom. And I also found this funnel, which isn't necessary. You could just pour water down into there, but I've added this funnel here just for ease of access. This system is great because it can allow for you to leave your plants unattended. Potted plants have a real tendency of drying out quickly. So this system prevents your plants from drying out as quickly and can allow you to get away and go on a vacation without worrying about your plants dying. It's also known for growing really healthy, large plants, which is why we're using it in our Dorset Naga challenge. That's the plant we'll be putting into this system today. And hopefully we'll get a very large harvest off of this relatively small pot. So with all of the components of our self-watering container all set up, all that's left to do is fill it with soil and get our plants planted. Okay, so we moved outside for this process because it's gonna get a little bit messy. And our first step is to fill the wick with a very absorbent and water wicking material. So I'm using this seed starter mix because it's primarily made up of peat moss and it's very, very absorbent. I've noticed, especially this brand, it really sucks up water fast and that's what we want this to do. So I'm just gonna pack, pack in really, really tightly and add a little water as I go just to make sure that this is really compacted into this container and it will stay that way throughout the life of this pot. 
So I'm really packing this in really tightly. Add a little more water. I'm gonna fill this right to the brim so it's basically overflowing with this material. So with our wick filled with seed starter mix, I'm gonna pop it into the saucer like so, seed it really well, and then drop this down into the pot. Our next step is to add our watering tube. So I'll just pop that in there. So for our actual potting soil, I'm using happy frog, but this isn't the most absorbent material. So I am gonna add some perlite and a bit of this seed starter mix just to make this a little bit more absorbent. So more of that water can be sucked up into the root system. So I'm not measuring anything here, but I'm just gonna add a decent amount of perlite. A good amount of this as well. And that's gonna lighten this up, make it a lot more absorbent. And I'm also gonna amend with a couple small handfuls of bone meal at this point. I like bone meal because it has lots of nitrogen and phosphorus, but it also has calcium, which is good for pepper production. But I'm really doing it because I'm adding these materials that don't have any nutrients, and that will fortify and add nutrition back to the soil. So I'll pre-moisten this at the same time. And you wanna pre-moisten and mix really, really well. This is a nice, nice fluffy mix. I can tell this is gonna work really well. Okay, so with our soil pre-moistened and amended, all that's left to do is add it into our container. So I'm gonna start by just hand adding it in so that this doesn't tilt it all on me. And this is a pretty large container, so it is gonna take quite a bit of soil. And before I get too far ahead of myself here, I think I'm gonna add the actual plant in. Now with the soil about halfway up in the pot, I'm adding in the plant and then I'll surround this plant with soil. This is a relatively big transplant for a pepper plant. So I wanna do it this way instead of trying to dig out a hole like you might otherwise do. Try to get it as straight as possible and then keep filling with soil. So this looks just about perfect. All that's left to do is water it in from the top and you'll wanna water whatever plant you're growing from the top for at least a week or two until those roots can get down to the bottom where you'll have your water reservoir. Optional but recommended at this stage with any pepper plant is to apply a stake at the time of transplanting. It just makes it easier in the long run if you apply your stake early on. You also definitely wanna fill up your reservoir at this point to make sure that that wick underneath stays moist and doesn't dry out and become hydrophobic. So you wanna keep the bottom full of water right from the start and keep it topped off as the season goes on. So now when I add water to our water tube, you will eventually start to see it coming out of our overflow hole on the side of the pot. And you wanna make sure that you place this on a level surface so that the water underneath isn't on a slant and potentially touching the bottom of your soil. So let's check back in in maybe a month or so and see how this plant is doing. So it's now been about 10 weeks since our last update and the plant is now gigantic and it's loaded with fruits. The plant actually had a bit of a rough start and it wasn't in the best of shape, but it's definitely rebounded and come back and now it is just exploding with growth. On average, I'd say that I've been watering this once a week, maybe. It's also rained a lot this year, but other containers have needed much more watering than this one has. Normal plastic pots or especially fabric containers. This is just way easier when it comes to irrigation. I would highly recommend getting some form of plant support in place if you plan on growing something big like a pepper. A cage would have been nice in this case, but the plant has grown a very impressive main stem and it really hasn't had any issue at all, even with the strong storms that we've had this year. So overall, I'm very impressed and again, just had to add water to the base reservoir through the fill tube, and that's pretty much it. So I hope you enjoyed this video and that you'll give a self-watering container a shot. It's definitely a great option if you live in a dry climate or you don't wanna worry about watering as much. 
but you really prefer growing in containers and the results are really impressive. So I'm looking forward to seeing how this does in future seasons and we'll definitely keep you updated here on the channel. Don't forget to check out our ebook, Growing Perfect Peppers, if you're interested in learning how we grow peppers from seed to harvest, our entire process of growing these beautiful plants. Check it out at the first link in the description below. Thanks so much for watching Pepper Geek and we'll see you next time.